In this video, I'm going to be discussing is Apple stock a good investment and going to be doing some Apple stock analysis using fundamentals and technicals to determine if Apple stock is headed back to $220 a share like many people, investors and traders think it is. So if you're interested in that, please keep watching as I'm about to get into how I feel about Apple stock's current market conditions. Now, I do want to point out, guys, yes, I am 18 years old. I've only been trading three years. However, within that time, I have made consistent profits um, and I've learned a lot. Um, I've made many mistakes that have cost me a lot of money and I've learned from those mistakes. Now, I see a lot of you guys saying, well, he's only 18. Why would I trust an 18 year old? And first of all, I'm not trying to give you any financial advice. I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your money or your investments or your trades or anything like that. I'm just sharing my opinions and experiences within the stock market. And a lot of you guys seem to enjoy these types of videos, so I'm definitely going to keep making them for as long as I can. Now, before we get into this, please smash the like button on this video if you do like it. Also, subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications so you never miss an upload. Okay, let's get right into this. Now, currently, Apple stock is sitting at a market capitalization of around $1.3 trillion. Yes, trillion. I know, it's just so crazy to think um, because really only a year to two years ago, it was sitting at under a trillion dollar market cap. And it's just really awesome to look at how far Apple has come and even some other companies like Microsoft. As currently, Microsoft is the highest market cap company just above Apple. However, Apple was the first to achieve a market cap of over a trillion dollars um, within the US stock market, which is really interesting as they hit that back in 2018. So obviously there has been pretty significant growth since then. Now, looking at Apple's technicals, uh, we can see that back in February, we reached a high of around $320 a share, um, and then we did have a massive dip because of the ongoing um, global illness that's affecting pretty much every economy and market at the moment, um, and that caused Apple to dip all the way down um, to about $214 a share or 33% loss. Um, however, it did quickly bounce back up above the moving average with a MACD cross around March 26. And ever since March 23rd, we have been rising quite rapidly. Um, currently, we are up 42% uh, within literally just a month's time, which is absolutely incredible and just shows how volatile a stock can be even during a market crash or recession, um, which a lot of people think is coming right a major recession which would obviously not be so good for the stock market or even real estate market for that matter um, so we will have to wait and see how that goes but for now if we maintain above $303 um, if we close above this and start moving up from here that would be actually pretty bullish because there was significant resistance around this point so if we do close above that I would say that's pretty bullish on the short term however anything can happen at the moment because of how volatile the markets have been but we are staying above the moving average which is a good sign if we look at the four hour charts they also look pretty bullish we have passed some significant resistance points around the 290 to 300 dollar levels so as long as we stay above that that would be pretty bullish um, on the short term right and the next major resistance is around that 325 dollar range which is pretty much the all-time high so if we did break above that point and close above it um, and then continue moving up that would be even more bullish however we'll have to wait and see because there is only some stocks trading above the February highs. For example, Shopify and Netflix are both stocks that are currently trading above the February highs, which is pretty significant if you think about it because we were technically in a stock market crash when the Dow Jones fell over 20% uh, within a few days, right? However, this video is not titled is Apple a good trade to make, right? We wanna know if it's a good investment. So if you're investing in Apple, let's say you got in a long time ago, you have most likely benefited greatly if you have not soared, right? And if you've kept your investments. For example, if you bought Apple, let's say even a few years ago, you are sitting pretty good. And if you invested in Apple stock, even within the last five to 10 years, you have been in for some significant gains, right? If you haven't sold your shares. For example, if if we look at um, 2016, um, we go back into May 20th of 2016, uh, we can see here that we are currently up 240%. So in around four years, we've gone up 240%, which is absolutely amazing. No, it's not the biggest gain, 
However, Apple is a stock that provides steady growth, and that is due to their dominance within the market, right? They are one of the most profitable and highest revenue companies out there, um, so they know how to market a product and sell a product to the masses. Now, if we go all the way back to the 2009 low, after the major market crash and recession we had back in 2008, uh, we can see here that we could have picked up Apple stock for $12 a share. Yes, $12, which is absolutely insane. That's close to 3,000% growth in about 11 years. That's pretty much an investor's dream, right? Right there. However, we can't just look at Apple's past history um, to see future performance as history does not always repeat itself. Um, but to be honest, with Apple, I really don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. Um, so yes, it's a good investment, but it's about when we buy, which is why we use technical analysis, right? And looking at it right now, on the short term, we are pretty bullish. We are in a more bullish trend here. We could break out of it at any moment, depending on what news comes out within the media, uh, which could drag the Dow Jones and other stocks down even more, probably drag Apple down with it, as we can see here when the Dow Jones fell, um, pretty much every stock fell exactly like this, normally between 30 to 50%. Some stocks even fell more like Tesla, which fell about 60%. So really Apple did not have the biggest fall. And that's something to note with Apple, right? You're getting more consistent growth over a period of time. And that's truly just because of how big the company is, right? Um, Tesla grows at a much more rapid rate. However, it also falls at a much more rapid rate. And that's just because it's a smaller market cap stock. And often the price will jump up and down a lot more quickly than it would with a stock that's been around longer, has more influence, um, and obviously much more market value like Apple. Um, that's not to say that Apple couldn't fall 50% or 60% uh, within a month's time, but it's less likely to in my opinion, right? Just based off um, the influence it has, the market cap it has, and there are investors out there that are not selling their shares no matter what. Now moving on to Apple's fundamentals, uh, which really explains why Apple has been so successful in the last 10 to 20 years and why their growth has been so steady and consistent, right? Now for the quarter one earnings report, which happened on May 6th, we can see here that Apple actually beat its earnings goal by 29 cents on the earnings per share, which is absolutely incredible because many people thought they would miss them completely. With everything that's going on around the globe, pretty much every company is not hitting those sales goals which is pretty understandable because people really don't have the money to be buying certain products right now that many businesses and companies rely on people being able to purchase, right? And Apple really should be a part of this group as they sell computers, phones, and all types of electronic devices, which I guess you could say are non-essential items, right? But people are still buying them up like crazy which really shows how loyal Apple's customers are and the overall brand power within the market. Now, upon looking at their financials, we can see back in 2016, they had about $215 billion in sales and $45 billion in profit, which is absolutely insane for a company of its size to have that big of a profit margin. And then we see in 2018, um, they had $265 billion in sales and then $60 billion in profit. So they increased their profit by $15 billion in just two years. And then in 2019, there was a slight pullback in terms of sales and profit. Um, they only came out with a profit of 55 billion and revenue of 260 billion. So still not too bad, but many people are worried about 2020 um, if they're going to reach their sales goals. But so far, uh, for quarter one anyways, they have. So I'm really not too worried unless we go into a major recession where people really don't have any money to be buying any products, uh, which could obviously be quite bad for Apple and many other companies. But you have to remember stock market crashes and recessions are all part of their cycle. Yes, they do lead to very unfortunate things, right? People lose a lot of money. We know using past history that the stock market usually recovers within the first three to five years after a major recession or stock market crash, right? Now, if you are an investor, right, and you are investing Apple, you think it is a good investment, um, and I myself definitely do, then you know that the majority of money and riches are made in a stock market crash or recession. And that's because everything is essentially on sale, right? So even if that were to happen with Apple and the rest of the market, we can safely say that Apple will return to its current price level sometime in the future, right? And by that time, you will probably be in for some major profits, especially if you were investing during the crash, 
when the stock was on its biggest sale ever. Now looking at Apple's balance sheet, we can pretty much say it's the end all and be all of a financially healthy and stable company. For example, its assets are much more than its liabilities. Um, the total assets are 338 billion and the liabilities are only 248 billion. So they're not going out of business anytime soon, especially with the revenue and profits continuously increasing year after year. Now that is my take on Apple and if I think it's a good investment for the future. As you guys probably know, I am personally more of a trader so I focus on technical analysis, especially during volatile times like this. I like to trade stocks on a daily or weekly basis so I'm constantly getting in and out of positions, not always focusing on the company's fundamentals like revenue, profit, assets, and liabilities, right? Which is definitely important to do if you are investing because with investing, you're obviously believing in the company uh, for the long term and you will think it will grow as the business grows. However, with trading, you're taking advantage of quick moves in the market using technical analysis and patterns. Now, if you guys would like to invest in or trade Apple stock after you've done your own research, of course, because I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not telling you to buy or sell any stock. However, if you want to, you can use a new commission-free stock trading platform called Wealth Simple Trade, similar to Robinhood or Webull. Um, but if you are in Canada um, and you want to trade stocks but don't want to pay commission fees like you would with QTrade or Quest Trade, then you can use Wealth Simple app. And if you are in the USA, you can also take a Advantage of this awesome platform. Um, it's completely commission free trading. You just download the app and you can start buying and selling thousands of stocks and ETFs, which is pretty cool. Um, and if you want to sign up, you can with the link below. And if you sign up and deposit more than $100, we will both get $5 for free, which is pretty awesome. So I really would appreciate if you could do that because it will really support this channel and keep me motivated to keep pumping out awesome content for all of you. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found value in it. If you did, please comment below why you like this video and if you have any questions I reply back to every comment as I really want to start a conversation with my viewers and subscribers so we can continue growing as a community that loves and cares about finance and personal wealth on YouTube. So if you did enjoy my video please smash the like button as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications so you never miss an upload. Additionally you can follow my Instagram at jacksonsummers111. I post all types of interesting content there as well and you'll be alerted anytime a new video comes out. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day and peace.